All right, on to our next one. An automation technology provider, LM Automation, is today announced it's raised an additional $10 million in growth capital as it looks to grow its airport technology. To tell us more is founder Aaron Hornliman. Aaron, welcome to the show. Congratulations, another great round for you guys. It's been a busy couple of years. Tell us a little bit more about LM and the problem that you're solving. Sure, thanks for having me today and uh, thanks for uh, uh, the uh, Capitalize congratulations. I think today we've raised close to $40 million and this is our uh, third round and it is a growth round. Um, originally, Elenium was focused and founded around trying to make the passenger experience at airports as seamless as possible using technologies like biometrics and voice recognition, um, really uh, try and make it as seamless as you go through security and on board to the aircraft. And with the onset of COVID, uh, it became quite obvious that the technologies we'd built for the airport actually was applicable outside of the airport as well. And what helped to, I guess, alleviate some of the annoyances that have come into our everyday lives because of COVID. Things like QR code checking in, uh, showing your vaccine pass, dealing with QR codes, all that type of stuff. And so we're really trying to make our everyday lives seamless, not just in the airports. Yeah, I mean, it was also a fantastic pivot in terms of solving other problems with touchless technology. But of course, airports have uh, had a pretty torrid time over the last 18 months. Um, so tell us where the opportunity lies now and why you decided to go for another $10 million. So it really is around uh, growth for the business. So, you know, we're continuing to invest in our sales team. We're doing a lot of heavy investment into R&D, and that's really a way for us to stay ahead of competitors. Um, it's been a really interesting 12 months. Uh, we're seeing that the actual airport and aviation industry is starting to open back up again. We currently have projects across Australia, uh, in the Middle East and Europe that we're delivering. Um, but really, this funding will help us take that technology we developed for the airport and deploy it into a whole range of different environments, uh, anything to, from offices to gyms to sporting stadiums. Oh, if you can make life easier getting in and out of all of those places, that will be fantastic. Now, one other thing I want to talk to you about, Aaron, is Paula Dwyer has come on board as your new chairperson. I want to ask, I mean, it's fantastic. You've got someone who's an ANZ board director, the former chair of Tabcorp, a uh, very great get in terms of board chair. I do want to ask you, how do you think about putting your board together in its composition? Take us through that process. So really, as we've kind of, I guess, evolved and matured, uh, the thinking around the board was really making sure we have people with both the right skill sets uh, that we need to, I guess, help um, move the business forward, uh, but also had a real belief in what we're doing. And in the numerous discussions Paul and I had leading up to her appointment, it was really clear that she believed in the vision that we had, as well as the ambition that we had in trying to make, uh, I guess, our everyday lives as simple and as frictionless as possible using technology. What advice would you pass on to other founders as they think about their governance and how they tackle that particular issue? Well, I think as the business starts to grow, you do really need to think about governance and what you're going to do in that space. I mean, you want to make sure that you're prepared for a whole uh, range of uh, options. And really, it's about us being match fit, right? Whether in a few years time, it makes sense to go to an IPO, uh, whether there is some sort of other event in our growth cycle, whether mergers, uh, acquisition activity, whatever it might um, uh, be moving forward, having the right people around you. Um, that both have, I guess, the right attitudes, the right, uh, the same beliefs, but also the experience to help guide you forward really is key. And I also think making sure you've got a very strong uh, relationship, a good working relationship, is the other part that uh, uh, was really important to me in choosing or helping to form the right board. Now, the other part of that, of course, is the investors and NRMA and Acorn came on again, but you took on a new investor in terms of Thornley. Tell us a little bit about that process and getting Alex and his team on board. Um, so we're really excited to have Thorny Investments uh, on board in this um, uh, round. And really it was about, again, you know, finding investors that could also be, you know, not just useful with their capital, but also useful in uh, being somebody we can talk to, somebody that has contacts in the industry, um, somebody that could come along for the journey for uh, uh, for a period of time. So there were the things we were looking for. And, you know, we had spoken to uh, Alex and his team a few times along the cycle, and it happened to be the right time for both of us. All right. Well, it sounds like a fantastic opportunity. 
You're basically in all four corners of the globe now. You've got 85 staff. Uh, are there markets that you'll be targeting over the next 12 months to two years that you really want to really lock down? So with our aviation products, it really is global, right? I mean, even in Australia, we have a, a handful of major air, uh, airports. So really, we do need to look overseas. You know, we've just uh, uh, deployed our technology into Vienna. We're currently going into Doha. We're already in Abu Dhabi. So uh, really, really do have a global growth strategy there. Uh, in terms of our newest product, uh, which is Faceway, a massively scalable facial recognition platform, originally developed in the airports, but now being deployed outside. Our focus is Australia and New Zealand. And we think that the local market is a really mature market and really quite having having quite a sensible uh, discussion around biometrics and where it's useful and where it's not. So we'll be focusing here first. But outside of that, you know, in the next coming years, once we really get it established well in Australia, Obviously, we'll be looking at the US, looking at Europe and looking at, looking at the Middle East for that as well. I do want to ask on that front in terms of biometrics, because, of course, we've seen plenty of debate about this particular aspect in recent years. By the same token, I've enjoyed going through the airport, staring my face at a screen and being able to go through passport check quickly and easily. How do you tackle those issues around privacy and ensuring that sort of it works as the right fit for people and they're comfortable with it? So I think this is something that a lot of people have actually got wrong in the past and one that we're working on really hard to get right. So it has to be part of the DNA, the foundation of what you're building. So technology is one thing, especially when it comes to biometrics, and it has to work well, it has to be fast, it needs to be accurate. But actually having the privacy controls built into the core is key. And, you know, we have patent pending applications around the fact when you enroll, it immediately asks you how long do you want the data stored for? Do you actually want to only use your biometrics for that one day going through the airport or going through a sporting stadium? Or do you want to store the information for three months because you're using it to access your gym? It needs to be just as easy to delete yourself out of the system as it is to actually enroll. Um, we don't store your photo at all. So when you actually enroll, we disregard your photo and we have uh, a token of your biometrics, which is used for identification. We try and limit how much actual data we need to collect about an individual. And we also list what we won't do with your biometrics, which I think is almost as important as listing as what we will do. So we're very clear. We will not use our biometrics in primary schools or high schools. Uh, we won't use it uh, to try and guess what your age might be or what your gender might be or what your ethnicity might be. So really it's about something that people are providing their consent to use and that it offers convenience and value. If we try and do something more beyond that scope, I think we risk uh, damaging our brand and our offering, and we also uh, risk losing the trust of our users.